This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, today we are back with another case of a non-dilating pupil. Uh, this elderly patient has pseudoexfoliation and this is the maximum pharmacological dilatation that could be achieved. I also need to be aware of the possibility of lag zonules in this case. Uh, I plan to use behexering as my pupillary expansion device in this eye. After staining the anti-capsule, I am using a dispersive ovary in the antechamber. After that, I am creating a 2.2 mm main incision and uh, I am also using cohesive OVD under the iris just to tent it up a bit so that it's easier to hook during the stretching maneuvers and also while engaging the pupillary expansion device. When we're dealing with the shallow antechamber, as in this case, a good OVD comes in handy. It is critical to stretch the pupil before using the B-hex ring. I use two Y-hooks to do the job for me and these Y-hooks are most ideal sets of instruments I have found to do this maneuver. The B-hex ring is gently introduced into the eye and placed over the iris. I prefer to use a standard protocol to insert this device. I use the B-hex micro forceps through the side port to engage the first pair of scrolls of the notches into the pupillary margin. Stabilizing the globe using a second instrument through the other side port is a useful trick to prevent the globe from being pushed out of the visual field during manipulation of the ring. The next alternative a pair of notches are engaged onto the pupillary margin. Now switching hands the forceps is used from the opposite side port to engage the remaining pair of notches into the pupillary margin. Once the ring is placed, we have a decent amount of exposure to continue with the rest of our procedure. The rexis is now being performed. It's about 5.5 mm in size. Now hydrodissection is being performed. The nucleus is pressed down to release any underlying trap fluid. The nucleus is then gently rotated to ensure that it's totally free from its attachment to the capsule bag. Now it's time to perform emulsification of the nucleus. After aspirating the superficial nucleus, the phaco tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus and a vertical chop is performed using a sharp chopper. The nucleus is of ideal density for chopping. The similar maneuvers of burying and chopping are continued. The nucleus is divided into multiple small quadrants quite effortlessly using this technique of vertical chopping and lateral separation. Once I have around 6 pieces, now I proceed to emulsify each of these quadrants. The principle I stress upon while emulsifying these fragments is to consume the fragments far away from the cornea that is at a much posterior plane. In this mid dilated pupil, it is easier to appreciate the plane of uh, emulsification. We can see that the fragments are moving around at the level of the iris plane. 
the phaco tip is present dead center at the level of the rexus and each fragment is individually consumed without causing much of a turbulence my chopper is held slightly on top of the fragment acting as a shield and to minimize uh, any chance of a tiny fragment flying around and hitting the cornea the parameters have to be such that the fragment is held glued to the tip and must be dancing around the tip until finally getting emulsified to minimize the chance of repulsion the phaco power must efficiently be controlled by using the foot pedal after the final quadrant is emulsified the remaining cortex is aspirated the intraocular lens is placed into the bag under the cover of his scholastic Before removing the OVD, the BX ring has to be explanted. And it's extremely easy to do so. Just disengage the ring and then pull it out in a single shot. Then the OVD both in front and back of the lens is removed. That's it. The case is done. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.